Hi, I'm Chris Hill, General Sales Manager of WBZ News Radio. I want to thank everybody for coming out on this rainy morning. We have got a great panel of experts to talk about social media this morning. So without further ado, we're going to get started. First, I'd like to introduce Senior Vice President, General Manager of WBZ News Radio, Market Manager of CBS Radio in Boston, Mark Hannon. Good morning, everyone. How do you know the radio guy at the social media, social marketing uh, uh, breakfast? The guy with the tie on. The only one. All of us radio guys, I should say. Anyway, good morning on behalf of WBZ News Radio 1030. Uh, in the scope of all of our business breakfasts, this is probably one of the most popular, uh, standing room only, as you see. Um, I think it speaks to the impact of social networking, uh, the fact that it's changed our lives, it's changed our world. You don't have to look far past Egypt to know that, and there's many other examples of it. We have a very esteemed panel this morning. Uh, clearly, you are embracing this topic, so thanks for coming out. Uh, I'd like to bring up Anthony Silva to introduce our panel for you. Anthony is the co-host of our afternoon news and also the editor of New England Business. Anthony. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Anthony Silva, and thank you so much for coming today. And uh, Mark Hannon, our senior vice president and uh, general manager of WBZ, also the general manager of uh, 95, uh, 98.5 The Sports Hub. And he has had such a ride with the Bruins, with Osama being captured, and this morning, if you didn't hear, Waddy Bulger is behind bars. <laughs> Amazing. I was, I was told this morning, who's next? Sasquatch? It's amazing. Well, thank you very much for your immediate and sustained response to today's event. This has been uh, an immediate response to what we all can do to improve our social media presence in our, in our businesses. You know, we produce these as free public service uh, presentations from WBZ. There was a similar event in New York City last month at which they charged $500 to get in. So I want to say, enjoy your bagel, <laughs> enjoy your OJ and coffee, and those of you who are standing in the back, there are some seats up front. So as they say in one famous game show, come on down, and you can sit right down here if you'd like. You can be nice and close, okay? Uh, also, what would a radio presentation be without sponsors? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why it's free. Uh, thank you to our presenting sponsors, First Republic Bank, Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission, South Coast Massachusetts, Delta Dental, Boston Medical Center, Salem Five Bank, you can munch your bagel at this time, IBEW Local 103, CBS Local Pages. Also, thank you to our associate sponsors, Nexamp, City of Boston Credit Union, Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, Canopy Lake Park. Did you see the uh, character out there? Our Bella Insurance Group, Spalding Rehabilitation Network, Digital Federal Credit Union, Elite Matchmaking, and F1 Boston in Braintree. Could we hear a round of applause for them, please? Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I, as you know, I'm the co-anchor of WBZ Afternoon News and also the New England Business Editor. And uh, I've been anchoring the Afternoon News Monday through Friday with my uh, partner in crime, Diane Stern, for many years. Uh, I've also produced 50 New England business reports a week uh, on the radio. In addition, we uh, produce these reports online as well at cbsboston.com. We also access, uh, you can also access our program on your mobile device at radio.com or cbsboston.com. We also produce, you can keep a list here, our daily uh, podcasts, our reports, and features that we do online at cbsboston.com. And we are also tweeting every day from the newsroom as well. Like you, our job has changed tremendously. And uh, we will discuss that in depth today. Our business, like yours, has expanded to multiple channels on air and online and beyond. From our local offers coupons to uh, multiple channels, CBS local pages, digital sales, CBS Boston and WBZ have expanded way beyond broadcasting alone. Broadcasting on a single AM signal, which, by the way, 
at night covers 48 states, all of New England, and we still reach a million people a week. So that's not too bad. And it's also that through that expanded reach that this multi-channel business has become that much more exciting. We're now getting calls from overseas because they're monitoring us and listening to us as we stream our programs live. So the opportunity is definitely there for all of us. What is the challenge, though, for our companies? How do you determine if it really works? And what is your return on investment? Is this, as one person called, another case of irrational exuberance or an unproven technology? Or is it here to stay and to grow and to multiply? And are we up to it? Well, we have a panel of experts to discuss that right now. And uh, we have among our panelists a brand new dad of twins, a marketing expert who was once asked to close down a business by Bob Kraft, but also sold a business uh, that was venture capital invested for uh, a, gil a gazillion dollars, a Twitter expert who has consulted some of the best and the biggest in the business, and a 23-year-old CEO who told me he did, even in the rain, bike to this event this morning. How many of you biked this morning? Huh? Uh, th two. Yes, okay, just a few. Would you please welcome to the stage Paul Gillen, Mike Troiano, Laura Fitton, and Seth Prebatch. Come on down. Thank you very much. And we are uh, streaming live online as well. I know my wife is watching and a few others. And uh, uh, during the event also, uh, you can, uh, you can uh, follow the conversation using the uh, Twitter hashtag WBZ Breakfast. How's that? So we are, we're live there as well. So let's start with, uh, with uh, Paul Gillen. He's the author of Social Marketing to the Business Customer, a veteran technology writer. I think the first time I interviewed you, you were the editor of Computer World. That's right. That's back, that's back when there were, there were print publications. Do you remember that? Uh, I remember that, yes. We work in radio, not print, thank God. And uh, yes, the, but is, it, it still exists, and uh, I guess it, it, uh, it continues. Uh, Paul's first book, The New Influencers, wa Influencers was written back in the Stone Age of, uh, of uh, I guess, uh, online communications, 2007, a long time ago. Tell me, bring us back there for a moment. What were the experts saying at that time about which direction we were taking? Well, I think at the, at the time, 2007, uh, that book was mainly about blogging. And, and blogging was pretty, pretty much all we had in 2007. I mean, Facebook was uh, practically unknown. MySpace was popular with kids. But the whole social networking phenomenon, I don't think anyone predicted that would happen at that point. So what blogs were uh, was a, a, an evolution of a metaphor that was well understood, which was publishing. It was publishing that was democratized to the masses. All of a sudden, anybody could blog and anybody could publish. Uh, so that was really where the, the future seemed to lie. Uh, Facebook changed all that, and Twitter changed all that, because what it, it, it did is uh, it, it, it moved us from a publishing metaphor to a peer-to-peer -peer networking me metaphor. And I like to think of it as uh, what we didn't predict is that we would go back to the most, the simplest form of human communication, which is the campfire, right? Humans have been gathering around campfires for about a million years. And what we've essentially done now is we've created this huge global campfire where we can get together, we can talk about the same kinds of things we would have talked about, the cavemen would have talked about, uh, only we have uh, hashtags to do it with. So uh, it, was, it, was, it was seen almost as a novelty back then. And how do you see this growing and changing and I know that your new book takes a look at that and develops that thesis. Well, the big change is the customer now is in control. I mean, uh, take the auto industry, for example. I have a, I have a friend who runs a, a General Motors dealership. And he says, uh, a few years ago, people would come in occasionally with these consumer reports uh, the surveys that they would, they would pay for. And he said, now they come in with information about what other people in their neighborhood have paid for the same car at his dealership in the last three months. And when you think about how that, how that changes, think of what's happening in the hospitality industry. When you go to reserve a hotel now, what do you see? You see all these reviews from other people who have stayed at a hotel. If you have a two-star rating from 50 people who have stayed there, that completely changes your business. You can't market your way out of a problem like that. Uh, you have to change the business. And so what we will see with social media is complete transfor transformative effect on businesses where customers now know so much more going into a decision 
that they really control the conversation, and businesses are going to have to learn how to respond to that. Excellent. Uh, Laura Fitton, thank you very much. We'll get back to a lot of that. Laura Fitton, uh, st she studied science writing at one time with Carl Sagan, I am told. True. <laughs> True. Uh, sailed a schooner. True. Yes. True. And raised a niece and also ran a hobby farm. I need to know, what's a hobby farm? Uh, it was three acres with a little tiny ranch house. I stuck a horse in the garage. I had goats, sheep, and chickens. Ah. I now have three chickens down in Milton on a tenth of an acre. A little uh, different. And you have two toddler daughters now, right? Four and five now. Oh, my They're growing goodness. fast. So not, not, not toddlers anymore. Yes, a busy, busy life. Tell me about the challenges of, of staying organized in this world of, of social media. It's all out there. The tools are there. But man, is it discouraging when you try to organize yourself. Sure, sure. So I went from uh, you know single mom consultant to CEO of a startup, which was strange. We built what we thought was going to be a consumer app store for all the apps built on Twitter. Well, businesses are who showed up, and they needed to know what to use, and we gave them a chance to batch together what they use. Businesses are using eight to 12 different tools. They're using a location-based promotion. They're using offers and couponing, a Facebook manager, a monitoring tool, an analytics tool, CRM. Some companies are using 15 or 20 tools. It's very hard to keep it all in one place. And it's also incredibly hard to scale it from those who are expert in your company or from what your agency is telling you to your entire team. Because social's coming to every desktop. If you don't believe me, think back to the phone and think back to email. Both times we said, ah, it's for marketing. We'll send out offers. This will never apply to accounting. It's going to apply to accounting. So you've got to start figuring out how. Do most of your calls come from companies who are already deep into it and in trouble, or those who have not yet entered? Well, we are a large business community, over 100,000 users, and we offer a SaaS platform, so it's all self-service. But um, I wouldn't say they're in trouble. I'd say they're realizing that it's eating up a tremendous amount of staff time and that people are their most expensive resource and that they're doing it kind of ineffectively. So they really need to tier turn to their peer group, which is what we have at the site, and find out what to do. In an organization, do you think everyone needs to understand the technology? Or do certain people inside the organization need to be the front people? I think you need to build literacy throughout, because anyone can screw it up. Yes. OK, we will continue. We will continue with that, too. And obviously, we're going to get your questions. We have a, a couple of microphones around, around uh, the room. And we're going to move quickly. So we ask you to tell us your name, your city, and uh, give us a question as well. Next 